Make sure to use our code FLIPSIDE to get a two-week subscription to the Key Collector app. Let's go ahead and start with our number 15 book this week. We have here Black Panther, The Man Without Fear, 513, 115 Frank Villa variant. This is an unknown Batman homage cover. In this issue, T'Challa is Hell's Kitchen, Hell's Kitchen new hero, and it's also the first appearance of Vlad the Impala. At 14, we have Marvel Rising Zero. This is the first appearance of Ember Quaid, a villain similar to Arcade in the X-Men universe. And it's the first appearance of the team of Squirrel Girl and Kamala Khan. At number 13, we have Thunderbolts 127 variant, 1 in 10 Jock variant. It's an excellent Venom cover that's all black and not. it's pretty hard to find a near mint. At number 12, we have Infamous Iron Man 1, 1 in 10, from 2016. This is the first appearance of Tony Stark's AI. There is speculation that Robert Downey Jr. could make a cameo appearance in return in this role. This recently got buzzed because there was a Marvel Legends figure that just came out of this character recently. At number 11, we have Avengers Ultron, number 11. This is the first appearance of Kamala Khan. For those that missed out on any of Kamala's other first appearances, this is a book, good book to have, and it's an iconic looking cover. All right, coming in at number 10, we have G.I. Joe, a real American hero, number 25. All right, so anybody who was into G.I. Joe in the late 80s, early 90s, know that the villains were by far the coolest characters. This is the first full appearance of Zartan, Zartan, um, when it came to action figures, was the one to have. One of my favorite all-time G.I. Joe moments is the time I convinced my dad to take me to Gemco and get the Zartan figure because Zartan is a bad mofo. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> if you guys do not realize how badass Zartan is, there's some problems. We, we got to change some things. So this figure not only came with his own little vehicle, he came with a face mask that you could put on his hood to change his face because he shapeshifted. And if you put him in the sun, he turned blue, ladies and gentlemen. It was amazing. And every <laughs> kid wanted Zartan. Right. He, he turned blue in the sunlight. Um, and this, this is the issue where we first see him. Um, a character from a villain perspective that is as big as almost Cobra Commander and one that has long-term potential as we see G.I. Joe continue to grow within the comic community and likely on the big screen. At number nine, we have The Boys, number three. Number three, as you can see from the cover, first appearance of The Seven. They're kind of in a cameo role in this. The Seven is the story that's on Amazon that everybody is appalled by and loves at the same time. Also, it's the first appearance of Homelander. And if you pick this book up and you read the comic, you see how he makes his entrance. You're going to be as appalled, if not more, in the comic as the TV series. We know that they're making more of this show. The Homelander is going to be such a key figure going down the line. Great pickup still. At number eight, we have Minecraft from 2018, New York City Comic Con, the Ashcan edition. It's a mini Ashcan. Some Ashcans are regular size. This is a smaller comic. Uh, this was handed out at NYCC. Uh, there, there's a kind of a mini story inside. Officially, I guess you'd call this a preview. Um, Minecraft. Uh, I think there's going to be a lot of people on, on both sides of it. Uh, arguably, it's one of the best, one of the biggest video games of the last 15, 20 years. Uh, as far as nostalgia goes, uh, there's going to be a lot of people looking back at this comic someday. So while it's $10, $15, it might be a good time to pick it up. At number seven, we have The Incredible Hulk, number 282. The first meetup of Bruce Banner Hulk and the She-Hulk. We know Bruce Banner is coming back. Mark Ruffalo is coming back. We know we got a She-Hulk TV show. Great book to pick up. It's already spiking a little bit. Their first meetup. 
Uh, there's multiple different iterations of this. You got your newsstand, you got your direct edition, Mark Jewelers, uh, Canadian price variant, etc. Just seems like this book is one to get on now before the She-Hulk TV show starts to pop. At number six, we have Transformers number one from 1984. Yeah, this is the first Transformer comic book um, with multiple sp price spikes in relation to 80s nostalgia. Transformers continues to be undervalued. This issue remains overlooked compared to other vintage, vintage properties. And although LCS is shy away from ordering Transformer titles, new issues are still put on the shelf. I think Transformers issue number one has a ROI that is more than meets the eye. Raw copies are anywhere from $30 to $100. Don't sleep on it because 80s books spike and when they, when they spike, they spike pretty hard. At number five, we have Doctor Strange, Sorcerer Supreme, number one, the second print. This is the first appearance of Kushala, uh, Mina, the Conjurer, the Mindful One, and I believe the, the villain, the Forgotten. Uh, Kushala is the, is, the, is the main character right now that people are talking about. Uh, she's the Demon Rider. She is both a Sorcerer Supreme and a Spirit of Vengeance. Um, she was announced last year as getting her own solo series. I don't know if that would be limited or, or ongoing. Uh, it's supposed to release in 2021. When that was announced, these, this number one uh, did pop a bit. There are a million different covers for this. 150,000 print run in total, which is pretty significant. Uh, so I, I guess of them, I like this second print in that I think a lot of Retailers probably had fatigue and probably weren't looking to have even more of them sitting on their shelves when the second print came to order. This has kind of fallen off a little bit. So any day now we should be seeing in a new previews of the Kushala series, we should see a bump at that time. And she has a really good shot of being the horror realm, uh, one of the next gen characters that we see in the years to come. We saw her in a Bartel women's uh Women's Month variant. We saw her in a Native American Varege variant. Marvel is clearly using her. At number four, we have Batman 609. So Batman 608 gets all the love, but people forget that that only starts the Hush arc. Um, but Tommy Elliott or Hush doesn't appear until this issue, 609. In my opinion, it's better than six the iconic 608 second print or the rrp this one really shows off jim lee's detailed uh, line art and scott williams inking skills when you think about it for the past 20 years hush is arguably one of the few additions besides maybe the court of owls to batman's rogues gallery with that has had staying power across all media he's appeared in animation and TV on multiple occasions and watch out if he appears in, in any movie. Uh, of course, it's too, too early, I think, to judge Tinian. I think T Tinian's on, added a ton of characters, but, um, but up, up until then it, it was, it's been kind of dry. The, the unbelievable thing I, I found about 609 is that 9.8s are still under $200 and even though there's, I think, over 700 graded, uh, that just blows my mind. If, if this was a Marvel book, I, I think it would be $1,000 easy. But uh, still, it's Jim Lee Batman. I, and with, with uh, Catwoman and, and Poison Ivy on the cover, I, I just got to think it's, it, it's, it seems undervalued to me. And, and first hush. For our number three book, we have Sherry number six. All right. Sherry number six features... Uh, the first time two of our very favorite heroes meet, Sherry and Miles Morales. Um, is this coming to the MCU? Maybe. Um, um, either way, um, this book is super important as two of the most important young Marvel heroes meet up for the first time. Um, this book wasn't exactly highly ordered at this point, so something I would be grabbing uh, if you come across it. 
um, a really good pick, I think. For our number two book this week, we have Dr. Afra number one, the one in 25 variant. So this book has a couple things going for it. It's the first issue of Dr. Afra's first solo series. And this is the one in 25 murder droids variant. The, uh, these droids are known as triple zero and BT one. If I just caught a murder droids, our star Wars show, you know, would, would give me uh, a hard time, but, um, let me give a quick shout out to our Star Wars uh, show on this channel. All right, you got Triple Zero, you got BT-1. Right off the bat, you get two droids for the price of one. But I got to tell you, everyone loves the bad guys. They love the assassins. These are the alter egos of C-3PO and uh, R2-D2. So let me give you, first let me pitch Triple Zero to you. This guy has a personality matrix so toxic, they had to quarantine his personality. There's a lot of people on the show that I think people would like to quarantine their personality too, but we'll talk about that later. Hey, 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 no shots. No Triple shots. Zero is all, he's all bad. He's crazy. He, they actually painted him gold one time, and he shocked Luke Skywalker pretending to be C-3PO. So come on, you got to go with Triple Zero here. But let's, let's not forget about a little BT-1. BT-1 is an assassin droid. He's got a freaking minigun mounted inside of him. He has a flamethrower. He roasted a whole room of battle droids at one point. BT-1 also comes equipped with other weapons, like a barrage of thermal detonators. Everyone loves thermal detonators. I'm a trooper. I love my thermal detonator. I don't leave home without You know, it. C-3PO, he's always like, oh, I'm a pro girl. I speak all these languages. When Triple Zero introduces himself, he introduces himself by saying, I do etiquette and torture. Check it out. The, the, these guys are just amazing and girls. Uh, they know incredible amounts about Star Wars, but I'm going to try to do it justice. Um, so I like this cover better than the higher ratio variants. There's a one in 50 and a one in 100 that are more expensive. But I like this one uh, because of, 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 of the droids, uh, this first issue begins the, the first arc of the solo s series and the, and these droids are just hilarious. They're like the polar opposites of, uh, C3PO and, and, um, R2D2, uh, just hilarious. But I think one thing that gets overlooked is this also has the first appearance of Dr. Afra's father, Corn Afra, and he's a key character in this first arc. And uh, he shows up uh, in, in a later arc as well. So if Afra gets her own show, he's likely to show up. Um, even if she doesn't get her own show, it seems like Afra's got so much momentum uh, that it, it's going to carry, a, a, you know, a, all of her keys along with it. And what we've, at least my observation has been in the market lately, is that people are gravitating towards the secondary keys of characters in addition to first appearances. So, and, and one of those secondary keys, it seems for characters is the first issue of the first solo mini series or ongoing series. So I think this is kind of an obvious uh, book and uh, I, I just, I, do, I love the cover. And for our number one book this week, we have Miles Morales, Spider-Man number six from 2019. This is uh, Starling's first full and cover appearance. Starling is a character that collectors are familiar with ever since she appeared in Champions. Continuously, we see a bond between her and Miles Morales. Her increased popularity will soon take flight, hinting for a possible standalone series. Clearly, we'll see more of her in the future, maybe on screen or in a video game. Time will tell. Raw copies go anywhere from thirty to forty dollars. I love this pick, Samson. I just want to add one thing. You know, sometimes we chase second prints um, because the print runs are lower. I would say the second print of this book, in my opinion, is far less desirable than this first print, uh, largely because she is not on the cover of the second print. I totally um, agree on that one, Ben. Yeah. In addition, um, you know, these books weren't exactly highly ordered. Um, I, I, I think they were, uh, uh, Miles Morales Spider-Man was doing less than 30,000 copies at this point, which makes this book scarce um, by most cases. Um, not super scarce, but, but definitely not, not a highly printed book. 
and um, I would be grabbing this first print over the second print. And I'm on record loving second prints, um, but this is one of the cases where the first print is the clear choice, in my opinion. Absolutely. Well, thank you for joining us on the Pros Pick 10 list. Uh, make sure to like and subscribe so you can catch all of our shows. Catch us on Thursday for our roundtable, and then you can also catch the Star Wars show that evening. Later. <laughs>